So Colin sets the bar pretty high. I mean, he asks those questions that are, that are just so tremendously sort of fundamental about why it is we're here today, particularly after spending a day of seeing people who are really saying to us, can we go to the next level? Can you look at this a little more deeply? Could we be engaged a little more than we are right now? So for the next few minutes, look at one street in the District of Columbia with me, 8th Street, 20 some blocks from here. This is the satellite view. This is 1st to 15th Street. Um, here's, here's another cut at this. For those of you that are not from here, um, H Street's pretty much regarded as a street that is taking off. It's doing very well. It's regenerating, it's cool, it's a great place to be at night. And my uh, talk for the next few minutes is, oh really? Really? Interestingly, H Street's probably the most studied streets, not only in the district, but maybe any place in the country. Not only do we know sort of all of these numbers about who lives there and who works there and how many businesses are there and what the businesses do, um, we've studied also, this is a, a kind of a complicated graph of a trade area sales analysis, money in, money out, who's there, why are they spending, times of day when purchases would be likely to take place. Sort of this tool alone a few years ago with um, like a clean suit would get you enough money to open a strip center almost anywhere. Here, don't bother reading all this stuff, but this is sort of the cut of all of the economic data and studies that have been done on, on H Street, even in the course of the last 18 months or so, but there's a problem. For those of you who don't know the street, just a couple of quick slides. The problem is, with all this data, all of what we know about H Street right now, and we would know this about a lot of streets in the neighborhood, but particularly H Street for the purposes of this conversation, all of this fails to ignite one new program or compel even a higher standard in any of the things we would want to take on there or it fails to be as engaging even as the opening of a cupcake shop or maybe even a snowball fight, but most importantly, it fails to tell a story about H Street. 50 people standing in line, and it ain't cake love. 50 people standing in line Sunday afternoon, two o'clock to get a cupcake. What's going on here? We've heard lots of conversations today about social media and how are people connected and, and what's occurring. But what exactly is this? Can you recognize this angle of the National Gallery? Can you see where I am, the, the east wing of the National Gallery, I am Pei? So I don't know if you know the story. Um, I am Pei told the stonecutter, <clears throat> listen, um, I want this really sharp angle. And uh, the stonecutter said, this can't be done. You can't cut stone this sharp. What we'll do is we'll give you a flat edge on this, and that will be just fine. And Pei said, no. I want a tight, sharp angle here. I don't think the stone's going to fall apart. See if you can make that happen. Obviously, they did. It's one of the most famous sort of architectural landmarks in the country. But what no one predicted is that people would actually walk up to it and want to touch it. And that's what the arrow points to an extraordinarily high standard. And people responded in a way that nobody could have predicted. If you don't know Bryant Park in New York, for people that like public space, it's kind of like the place that everybody talks most about. And here's, you're in, sitting inside the cafe, looking outside, and it looks like an Impressionist painting. And here's the sort of view from the park itself, looking back at the cafe. Take a look at the chairs. Chairs are not bolted down to the ground. And take a look at the little green line and the, little, and the sticks that are there to remind you that we just planted the grass. And they're very civil. They tell you, look, the lawn is closed and um, the sod is resetting itself. This is the way we tell you to keep off the grass on H Street. <clears throat> I believe that's barbed wire. The question is, does that make a difference to them? So here she is also in her form in Edinburgh, Scotland, playing the violin in the midst of the Fringe Festival, 
with her brother holding the music in a beautiful landscape, little place, flowers behind her, people walking by, collecting money in the rain. Here's our guy, a squatter on Pennsylvania Avenue, invading someone else's festival. He has the feet of a tap dancer, pardon the pun. He has the feet of a tap dancer. He can play the drums like nobody you've ever seen. And he'll probably be arrested within the hour. Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica. So I don't know if you've seen these topiary dinosaurs. They've been there for quite some time. This is a photograph of just a couple of weeks ago. And look how it's beautifully landscaped and how the, the sort of the ivy has filled in over on the topiary figures. And they're kind of a silly icon in the middle of Third Street Promenade. They're about 20 years old, which means they're the same age as this library in the middle of H Street. The heartbreak is that library is 1.8 miles, 30 minutes walk in a straight line from this architectural icon. You don't have to show the slide of the piazza in Rome or somewhere to make the case that we really are not paying attention, even in our own city, to where best examples are for what we should be doing. Why is it that you can walk down 8th Street for the whole of the 15 blocks and not see one flower box? A simple thing, a simple, quiet moment of something to enjoy. The elements of place are completely understood by the real estate industry, as illustrated in this totally fake place built north of Baltimore, where the benches, the trash can, the flowers, the angled parking are all perfectly sort of picked from someplace else and dropped into place here to create a place without one ounce of soul. The Awakening is, I'm sure you know, taken from Haynes Point after 29 years, was sold for three quarters of a million dollars to the people at um, National Harbor. Do you think for one minute that they're art collectors? Every ounce of research about people in public places, particularly places where shopping exists, tells us that people want to be in a place where they can spend time with family and friends. Papa, can we go back to that place where I got to stand a big giant's hand? That's the asset, not how much is in the shopping bag when you leave. If you go to a place where you want to be, you stay twice as long and spend twice as much. Is there something we can learn about that for H Street? <laughs> DuPont Circle after the snowball fight, or the day after. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is then, what happened the day before? I mean, I mean what actually happened, do you know? How did this occur? How do you get 2,000 people to one place at one time to do all of this? And how intentional was this? And what levers got thrown for this to occur? And then I maybe would make sense that this technology or whatever this was, this community, didn't actually exist as it does now. And it sure as hell didn't have the ability to communicate with itself three years ago quite like this. Is there something we can learn about that? And I mean, isn't that also a theme that's kind of been throughout many of the talks today? What is about the social networking stuff that we could put in neighborhoods. I, I realize the microphone's going in and can you, I don't know, hope you can hear me. Here they come, I can hear them. <laughs> Everybody in the green, green room is saying, man, I can't tap dance, I'm a brain expert, I don't know. <laughs> so, I, the, H Street is under construction, as many of you know. And it's the benefit of a terrific public improvement process. The whole of this 15 blocks is going to be rebuilt, literally from building front to building front. But the question is, is that going to get us there? The guys who are the pioneers on 8th Street need to survive. 
In, in fact, they have to survive. But the demands of being in business now means that these little businesses have to think in terms of $800 a foot, $1,000 a foot. It's a, it's a number that's only, it seems like it's not even achievable for small business, but we have to think through what it will take to be sure that they succeed. I think what we learned from the awakening is that the elements of place are well understood. And I think what we learned from Brian, Brian Park is that if, if a place dignifies people, they will respond but with dignity. They don't steal the chairs. They enjoy the place. They bring their children there. Excellence touches people deeply. You only have to spend an hour in this room today to know that that's for sure. And maybe the snowball fight teaches us that an intentional community can happen almost spontaneously. I mean, wasn't Neil Takamoto at least saying that we have some tools around this? We can work at this. You know, we can explore this differently, differently than perhaps we ever have been. So Columbus Day weekend, a year from now, all of the construction on H Street is over. Let me suggest something for you in the same vein that Colin put it out to you a minute ago. Look at 8th Street with me. And shouldn't we have public art projects? And shouldn't we be mentoring the businesses locally? And shouldn't we be creating oral histories that celebrate the people that live there now and have lived there for a long, long time? And should we find 10 businesses to be there that we would say, I oh, mean, they are the coolest and I'm proud that they're there. And wouldn't you have a push cart there selling fresh fruits and vegetables? And shouldn't we put artists in all the vacant spaces Go to our Facebook page. Let's talk about this some more. Thank you, everybody.